There were many steep gradients on UK railways that often meant heavy trains required the aid of banking engines. One such gradient was the Warsborough Incline that frequently saw heavy coal trains travelling up it. The Great Central Railway that ran the line eventually decided they needed one big dedicated banking engine, similar to Big Bertha on the Licky Incline ran by the Midland Railway, that would be able to push the heavy coal trains up the hill instead of the two 280 engines currently doing the job. The railway considered many options and settled on a Garrett type of locomotive. However, the designs for the engine or the resources needed to build it wouldn't be available until the Great Central Railway became part of the LNER in 1923. The LNER picked up the project and the resulting engine was certainly a sight to behold. The engine was built in 1925 in the span of just three weeks for the modern equivalent of half a million pounds. Oh, and it was absolutely massive, being one of the biggest engines to ever run on British rails. This absolute unit used the base wheel arrangement of two class 04280s with three cylinders at each end, basically giving it the power of two engines in one. It was moved to Mexborough and started its life helping coal trains up the Warsborough Bank, taking the place of the two class 04s that were there initially used for the job. It weighed around 180 tonnes, had a tractive effort of nearly £73,000 and was more than suited for the job. While the engine worked as intended, it was known to have some issues. While the footplate crew had a bigger cab to ride in, they summed up the engine as twice the work for the same sodding pay. The line also went through two tunnels, and with two other engines in front of theirs, crews would often describe travelling through the tunnels as hell due to the amount of smoke, ash and heat from the other two engines ahead, as well as their own. Gas masks were provided for a short time, connected to a pipe sitting under the frames of the engine so the crew could breathe better. Most workmen, however, opted not to use them over hygiene concerns, instead using the time on a tradition of just covering their mouths with a damp hand Chief. Aside from crew complaints, the engine also possessed some minor mechanical faults, with firebox damage after only two years of work and the soft water used in the engine meant the boiler needed to be retubed. It was withdrawn from service in 1930 so it could be modified and have a new firebox fitted. It was put back to work nine months later and continued to work the incline until 1949, with the main issue it faced being steaming problems put down to the poor quality of coal it was burning. In 1948, it was renumbered. 69999 by British Rail and in 1949 was moved to the Licky Incline in place of the old banking engine Big Bertha. It was fitted with Bertha's headlamp and while it did the job, footplate crews complained about visibility when buffering up to passenger trains, so it was turned around to run Bunker First instead. Even then, footplate crews had problems seeing ahead, especially after dark, resulting in the engine going back to its original job at Warsborough Bank in 1950. By 1952, it was sent to the Gorton Locomotive Works where it was to be prepared to work on the Licky Incline again. The engine stayed there for three years while several attempts were made to convert the engine to burn oil instead of coal. It was put back into service in June of 1955 on the Licky Line, but was sent back to Gorton in October of the same year. British Rail, likely now seeing the engine as more fuss than it was worth, officially withdrew the engine from service in December of 1955 and had it cut up in Doncaster Works early the next year. For what it was, the the U1 was fairly successful as it managed to do the work it was designed to do and had a working life of over 30 years. However, its size and shortcomings in steaming were likely what led British Rail to simply choose their 9Fs and several tank engines to do the banking work instead of it. If the design was more refined, then it may have had a longer working life and it might have even been possible for it to work elsewhere on British Rails, but as it stood, it was simply too long, too heavy and too inefficient. All the same though, it must have certainly been one hell of a machine to see in action. Subscribe for more.